Hi, I'm Summer Rain, and this is my handmade home in Brooklyn, New York. My name is Summer Rain Oaks, and I live with my pet chicken, Kippy. And I am the creator of Homestead Brooklyn, which is a blog and a YouTube series to really connect people back to nature, particularly people living in the city. I think I have a little over 750 plants. The last time I checked, and I have to like update my spreadsheet because I'm nerdy like that, um, it's probably a little over 400 different species or cultivars or varieties of plants. and. Um, and this has been kind of like years in the making. I've lived here actually for 14 years, so the space was pretty barren when I moved in, and I think now it really, really feels like a home to me. One of the first things that I wanted to do to kind of warm up the space, I ended up getting a ficus lyrata, which is a fiddle leaf fig. It was about, you know, maybe three or four feet tall when I, when I brought it in, and it just, completely transform the space. Kippy, oh, you're so tall. You're so tall. You want to get down? Okay. Soft landing on the cushions. So this is my first plant. This is my fiddle leaf fig. I actually cut it back by about two thirds. I've had it for probably now my 10th year, going into my 10th year. So it is a beast and it holds a special place in my heart because it's the first plant that I got. And that's part of the thing that I like about like this place is that the plants have really made this their home as much as I have. Um, so it's, it's nice to be able to find these like little pockets for these particular plants. This is more of a cacti and succulent corner. So the bedroom was actually used to be my office space. My goal for that space had always been to create a vertical garden on that wall. Kippy, do you wanna be in this? Wanna come up here? Hmm? Uh, 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 uh. Hold on, she's gonna poop. It goes straight into the compost if you're wondering. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. It's like having a incorrigible child. <laughs> Living with a chicken is full on. It just is, it is what it is. It just adds to the weirdness, but that's, that's good. You just gotta own it sometimes. So this is my sub-irrigated green wall. Basically, these are glorified gutters sitting on rafts in felted pockets. And the sub-irrigation system means that the water comes from below. And so how that actually works is that there is a tube up here that cuts through to the back of my house into the sink, and I could turn it on from there. And then the water comes through the pipes and feeds it on the bottom. And then once that one fills up on the top, then fills to the second row, third row, fourth row, and fifth row. This is uh, reinforced. Whenever anybody wants to think about building a green wall in their house, they have to consider the amount of weight that's going on the wall. So this actually used to be my closet. It just seemed like a waste of light because all that window light was coming in and I would try to block it away from my clothes and so that it wouldn't bleach my clothes. And I was like, this is stupid. Like I should just move my clothes out of here and just turn this into a garden. It may seem a little taxing to have to water all these, but what's great about it is I have these things on humidity mats. So these are mats that kind of you water and then the water comes up through the bottom of the terracotta pot because terracotta is porous. My favorite DIY project that I ever did was my first DIY project that I did with my dad, which is the mason jar garden that's in the kitchen. I really love that one in particular because it is my first like father-daughter DIY project. My dad is so fun to do DIYs with. And it was a totally upcycled project. Like it was just found wood, uh, mason jars, and then the, I think the only thing we bought were Tapcon screws and hose clamps. So this is my kitchen space, and there is a lot of handmade elements within this kitchen. Even this countertop was just made basically for this space. This has a hole cut out in it because I could throw my composting here when I chop up vegetables and take out the compost, put it in the freezer, and take it to uh, the green market. This was my old stove. So instead of tossing it, basically turned it into a sub-irrigated planter. If you look up here, this is a flexible flyer turned into a plant shelf, but also 
a place where you can hold your pots and pans and your cups. And if you look over here, this is a swingable shelf, like vertical garden. This is actually inspired by this broom handle. So this broom handle was sitting in the corner of this area forever since I moved in here. I wanted to create like a green wall, but I still wanted to see the space of the exposed brick. These are all upcycled boards, hand cut holes, just some rope and some zip ties and the broomstick. Being able to like actually try to grow plants that typically wouldn't be considered a quote unquote house plant, even though that's a totally human construct, um, is very interesting to me. And sometimes I fail and sometimes I don't. And sometimes I try again. It's a lot of trial and error and experimentation. I get a lot of um, people who come in, they're a little bit slack-jawed. You can see they're just like, oh my God, look at all these plants. Um, but a lot of times people say, this really reminds me of my grandmother's house. There's some element that feels like someone is coming home. I do think that the plant shop by my house like gets a lot of business afterwards because I think if people like get inspired and they're like, okay, I'm gonna go get a plant right now. <laughs> If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna watch more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to Handmade.